Hi, today we're going to talk about interference in two dimensions. We have a single goal for this session, which is to understand patterns that look like this. You know, this looks very complicated. There are basically two sources here sending out waves, and you get constructive and destructive interference going on that sets up this really neat pattern. And so we're going to try and, uh, and understand this pattern. Okay, so let's start just by talking about some general things about the interference of light. And basically anything we say about light, you can also say about other waves, such as sound waves. And for a long time, there was a dispute about li what light was. Was it made up of particles? Newton certainly thought that it was. Was it made up of waves? And this debate lasted quite a long time. And Newton really did spend a lot of time arguing that uh, light was made up of, um, of particles. But in 1801, Thomas Young carried out a very famous experiment. This is known as Young's double slit. And the only way to explain this experiment was that light was acting as a wave. Okay, so it showed very clearly that light acted as a wave. And then all throughout the 1800s, there was whole bunch of other experiments that verified that. And so what we're going to do for the next little while is to focus on wave properties of light. And then just to give you a little preview of what's going to happen next, well, Einstein came along a little bit later and he wrote some very famous papers in 1905. And one of the works that he did was um, to show that light sometimes acts like particles. Okay, so back to light acting like waves. So how do you produce a stable interference pattern like the one that we saw in the animation at the beginning? So the sources have to be coherent. Okay, so they have to put out waves that maintain a fixed phase relationship. And it's also easiest if they have a single wavelength. In other words, if the sources are monochromatic, if they're made up of a single wavelength, single frequency. Okay, but the really important part is you've got to have a fixed phase relationship between them. You can do this easily with sound. You can connect two speakers to the same source of sound, and then those speakers will be coherent. However, if you just simply turn on two light bulbs or uh, have two candles, they are not coherent light sources. Two lasers are also not coherent light sources. However, a single laser shining on a pair of slits is does count as a um, as two coherent light sources just because you can trace it back to the same the same source really okay so here we're going to look at patterns created by two speakers and what you're going to see is just these waves emitted by the left speaker that's in the left picture and then waves emitted by the right speaker Okay, and there are just peaks and troughs that emanate out from, um, from, oh, sorry, I hit the wrong button. There we go. That emanate out from the uh, center source there. And if you do it on the right, there's a pattern emitted by the right speaker. Okay, so these are easy patterns to understand. Okay, so peaks and troughs are emitted by the sources at various points in time. And then those waves travel out through the medium and they go off at the same speed in all directions. So you get these circles that are just steadily expanding as time goes by. Okay, so those are what happens when the individual speakers are turned on one at a time. So what do you think is going to happen when you turn them on together? And you overlay these patterns. And when you overlay the patterns, then you get some cool things that look like this and look quite similar to the ones we showed at the beginning. That was had red and blue things on it. And the red was uh, basically positive displacement regions, and the blue was negative displacement regions. Here, black is no displacement, and white is either, well, it's large amplitude in either positive or negative. Okay, so what we get here are bands of constructive and de destructive interference happening. So these two sources are in phase. They meet they emit 
emit peaks at the same time as one another. They emit troughs at the same time as one another. Okay, and these peaks will travel through the air, and at particular places, those peaks will overlap and interfere. Or sometimes a peak will arrive from one at the same time a trough arrives at that point from another, and then you get destructive interference happening. Okay, but you get this neat pattern of dark bands, destructive, destructive interference, and light bands where constructive interference is happening. What really matters here is what we call the path length difference. So you stand at some point in the pattern. Okay, so you're a certain distance away from one source. You're another distance away from the other source. So what really matters is when you subtract those two differences, those two, sorry, distances, to get a path length difference, how long is that in terms of wavelengths? Okay, and we'll go over why that is important. But the path length difference is the distance you are from one source minus the distance you are from the other source. The difference between the two path lengths. Okay. Okay, so let's start with a perpendicular bisector. So perpendicular bisector to what? Well, you have the two sources. They're shown in red. And you imagine a line that goes straight through those two sources, connecting the two sources. You do a perpendicular bisector of the line connecting the two sources. Okay? Now, think about what the path length difference is for any point on the perpendicular bisector. Sector. So pick any point on the perpendicular bisector, figure out how far you are from one source, subtract off how far you are from the other source, what do you get? Okay, so the best answer, zero, half a wavelength, one wavelength, integer number of wavelengths. Uh, more than one answer may be possible to this question. Choose the most precise answer. So what do you think there? Okay. So, of course, when you're on the perpendicular bisector, you're the same distance away from one source as the other, so the path length difference is zero. Okay? This is what is shown with the red lines in this picture. Okay? And let's go to, say, the, the two yellow lines. Okay? The two yellow lines, you're clearly farther from the left source than from the right source, but you can see you're on a band of constructive interference there. So it turns out, perpendicular bisector, all points are zero wavelengths further from one source than the other, the same distance from one source compared to the other. With the yellow uh, lines, that point happens to be one wavelength further from the left source than it is from the right source. If we look at the two green lines, you can see that's in a zone of destructive interference. Okay, That's just off from the perpendicular bisector going down. Okay, so that point there where the green lines intersect happens to be a half a wavelength further from the right source than it is from the left source. So if you're at the if you're on the perpendicular bisector, okay, with the red lines, okay, the two sources send out peaks at the same time. They travel through the medium the same distance, they're traveling at the same speed. So those two peaks will arrive at that point in the perpendicular bisector at the same time, and because they're both peaks, they interfere constructively with each other. Similarly, with the yellows, what happens is a peak gets sent out from the left source, it takes a certain amount of time to reach that point where the yellow lines intersect. Another peak is sent out from the right source, it takes a certain amount of time to reach the place where the two yellow lines intersect. Okay. Now these are different distances, so peaks that are emitted at the same instant from the two uh, sources do not arrive at the place where the two yellow lines meet at the same time. However, when a peak arrives there from the right source, the peak that left the left source at the same instant as the one that left the right source is a wavelength away from arriving at that point where the lines intersect. Well, what's a wavelength away? Well, another peak, right? So you get two peaks arriving at the same time. Again, so you get destructive interference going on. So our condition for constructive interference, we say path length difference is an integer number of wavelengths. Okay? Delta L, the path length difference, is m, where m is some integer, times 
lambda, the wavelength. For destructive interference, what happens is the path length difference is an integer number of wavelengths plus a half a wavelength. Okay, delta L is m plus a half lambda. So what happens now is, look at the green lines where they intersect. Okay, peak arrives, sorry, peak is emitted by both sources. Travel through the medium at the same speed. The peak from the left source arrives at that intersection point where the green lines intersect uh, before the one that arrives from the right source. The one from the right source is now half a wavelength away from arriving. Well, it's a half wavelength away from a peak. It's a trough. So a peak arrives from the left at the same instant a trough arrives from the right. You get destructive interference going on. Later on, when that peak arrives from the right, a trough is arriving from the source on the left. Destructive interference. You get lots of cancellation. Okay, so we'll do that again. Here they are in color. So the red is for peaks. The blue is for troughs. Okay. And let's see, these two points here happen to be two and a half wavelengths from either source. So that yellow point is two and a half wavelengths from the left source, two and a half wavelengths from the right source. The fact that it's two and a half is irrelevant. What matters is it's the same distance from the left source as it is from the right source. So the path length difference is zero. Okay, could be 2.3, could be 2.0, could be 2.7. What matters is the same distance from left and right. Path length difference is zero. You're going to get constructive interference there. This other point happens to be two and a half wavelengths from the left source and two wavelengths from the right source. So the critical issue there is it's half a wavelength further from one source than the other one. Okay, so when a peak arrives from the right source, a trough is arriving from the left source and vice versa. So you always get cancellation going on at that point. Again, it doesn't matter that it's exactly 2.5 and exactly 2. It could be 2.7 and 2.2, 2.6 and 2.1, something like that. The difference between the path lengths is a half a wavelength. That's what matters. Let's go to our third point. Third point happens to be three wavelengths from one, two wavelengths from the other. It doesn't matter that those are individually integer number of wavelengths. What matters is the difference between them is an integer number of wavelengths. So we could be 3.4 wavelengths from one and 2.4 wavelengths for other, from the other. We'd also get one wavelength further from one than the other. Destruct, uh, sorry, constructive interference is going to happen there, an integer number of wavelengths. When a peak arrives from one source, a peak is also arriving from the other source. And you can keep going, okay? So on the perpendicular bisector, no wavelengths. Line of darks to the right or left, half a wavelength further from one than the other. Next set of bright lines, one wavelength further. Next set of darks, one and a half. Next set of brights, two wavelengths further from one than the other, etc. So that's how you can interpret this pattern. Okay, so it all comes down to path length difference. And it looks like a crazy pattern, but in actuality, it's not too hard to make some sense out of it if you understand this concept of the path length difference. Okay, so just to summarize, we have two sources sending out identical waves in phase with each other. We say the path length difference, delta L, is an integer number of wavelengths, m lambda, m some integer, lambda is the wavelength. Our condition for destructive interference, the path length difference is delta L is m plus a half wavelengths, m plus a half lambda. Again, m is some integer. Okay, so that is completely constructive interference and completely destructive interference. If your path length difference is not exactly m lambda, not exactly m plus a half lambda, you'd be somewhere in between complete cancellation and complete uh, constructive interference. Okay, so you get something happening, but it won't be as bright as other places, won't be as dark as other places either. Okay, and again, you can do this for sound waves as well as for light. You can do it for any kind of waves, water waves, you name it. Okay, so that's all for our introduction to two-dimensional interference.